If you're anything like me, you'll find problems with your sinuses a right pain in the arse, which can totally ruin your day. Also, if you're like me, you will have probably been prescribed medical treatments such as antibiotics and steroid nasal sprays to treat your sinus problems. But it always feels like the problem keeps coming back. I've been a doctor for 18 years and thought I knew the best ways to manage sinus problems. But it turns out I was wrong. So later in this video, I will show you how to improve the health of your sinuses and reduce the pain in the arse symptoms with easy and natural things you can do yourself at home that provide long-term benefits and don't require a doctor like me. Along with my experience working as a GP since 2012, I also have a stupid immune system, which has caused me a number of problems through my life. One of those problems has been issues with my sinuses, thanks to recurrent allergies and recurrent sinusitis. Interestingly, there is a link to ADHD in stupid immune systems, as every part of an ADHD body is hyperactive and hypersensitive, but that's for another video. Before I go into the treatments, we should first have a brief look at the sinuses and their common problems, so you can best understand how the treatments I will describe will work. So, what are the sinuses? The sinuses are air-filled spaces within the skull. They are lined with membranes that produce mucus to clear, filter and protect the nasal passages. Generally, most people refer to the combination of the nasal passages and their sinuses together as simply their sinuses. A big thanks to my 11-year-old daughter for creating the anatomy picture you've just seen. The nasal passages are a gateway from the harsh external world to the protected internal body. This means it is very important they are functioning properly to help protect us from potentially harmful factors in the outside world and maintain a healthy body. Healthy nasal passages have quite a salty and acidic environment compared to other parts of the body in order to kill off potentially harmful microbes before they can infect us. Similar to the health of our gut, our nasal passages and sinuses need a healthy microbiome of beneficial microbes bit like an army waiting to defend us from invaders. The nasal passages and sinuses have their own specific colonies of microbes, which are very different to those in the gut or other parts of the body. Our microbiome is unique to us and is closely linked to our immune system. Certain bacteria can reduce inflammation, while others can increase inflammation. Balance and diversity of different microbes is key, as it is with gut health. Therefore, imbalance, also known as dysbiosis, can lead to several problems, again, like it can with the gut. Later, you will find out how the treatment is aimed at rebalancing the nasal microbiome. Problems in our nasal passages or sinuses cause a number of different troublesome symptoms. These include congestion, nasal blockage, loss of smell, pain or pressure, excess mucus, recurrent chest infections, and post-nasal drip. As a quick side note, post-nasal drip can trigger vocal cord dysfunction. This is a reflexive closure of the vocal cords as we breathe in to protect the lungs from foreign objects being accidentally inhaled. If the vocal cords go into spasm due to the reflex becoming overstimulated, it can lead to coughing, a hoarse voice, a feeling of something being stuck in the throat like phlegm, and a restriction of airflow when we breathe in. These symptoms are horrible, and probably why you click this video. There are many different causes for problems of the nasal passages and sinuses. These range from airborne irritants that include allergens, pollution, chemicals such as those found in household cleaning products, dust particles and even dry air. Other causes are infections which are mostly due to viruses like the common cold. Even food allergies or intolerances can trigger inflammation in the nasal passages and airways. The inflammation caused by these factors leads to changes in the microbiome over time, as well as directly causing symptoms like nasal blockage and excess mucus production through activation of the immune system's inflammation pathways. Other causes for problems of the nasal passages and the sinuses are the treatments used to manage the symptoms. These include antibiotics, which damage the microbiome, nasal sprays that usually contain preservatives like benzalkonium chloride, which also damage the microbiome. Corticosteroids in medicated nasal sprays also disrupt the microbiome, including allowing thrush to overgrow. Other medications, such as those used to treat heart disease, high blood pressure and erectile dysfunction, can cause nasal blockage in some people as a side effect. They often work by dilating blood vessels, which in the nose causes swelling that narrows the airways. Decongestant medications do the opposite and constrict blood vessels, which opens the airways. Antibiotics and steroids are common treatments issued by doctors for sinusitis. That's what medical school teaches us to do. But these medications can cause longer term problems due to their negative effects on the microbiome. Also, as I previously mentioned, the vast majority of sinus infections, i.e. 95 to 97%, are viral and do not respond to antibiotics. You can probably see the theme related to the microbiome and you will soon find out how to treat the problems. Before I knew what I'm about to tell you, I was plagued by almost constant green or yellow mucus and nasal blockage. When things got really bad, I would seek medical treatments, 
If I got a viral chest infection, I would frequently develop a secondary bacterial chest infection that led to needing more antibiotics. Now I realise the medical treatments I used in the past ended up being part of the problem, leading to a less diverse microbiome, with too many inflammation-promoting bacteria and fungi, such as thrush, which is Candida albicans. One of the signs of dysbiosis of the nasal microbiome is persistent green or yellow mucus. The increased numbers of certain bacteria affect the colour of the mucus, similar to conjunctivitis causing yellow or green discharge in the eyes, or impetigo causing yellow scabs on the skin. Higher numbers of problematic bacteria living up your nose can increase the risk of chest infections as the nasal passages are directly connected to the lungs, and they can also affect the gut health as the gut is connected to the nasal passages via the throat. After a lot of intense adhd fueled hyper-focused nerd research, I decided the basis of my own treatment would be to rebalance my nasal microbiome. Since implementing the treatment for the past couple of years, my mucus has been totally clear, my hay fever symptoms are much less problematic, and I haven't had a single chest infection, and I used to get them several times a year. To make sure my fellow nerds don't scream at their screens in protest, please note, testing things on myself does not constitute a robust clinical trial, although I do know many people that have reported similar benefits after trying it out for themselves. The two main treatments are sinus rinses, also known as sinus irrigation, and direct administration of probiotics, also known as good bacteria, into the nasal passages. Sinus rinses are done using lukewarm water with a mix of salt and sodium bicarbonate. They directly remove inhaled irritants and excess mucus by physically washing them out of the nasal passages. The amount of salt can vary depending on the desired effect. Isotonic rinses, which have the same salt level as our body, are good for ongoing use or if you're adding probiotics to the rinse. Hypertonic rinses, which have more salt than our body, can be used to kill off problematic microbes that have become too high in numbers and form the initial stage of the treatment plan that I will list at the end of the video. Most of the harmful or inflammatory bacteria can't tolerate higher salt levels and die off. Most of the beneficial bacteria can survive higher salt levels, which is why sauerkraut and kimchi can be made by simply adding salt to vegetables before leaving them to ferment. I have not been sponsored by this company, but I've always used the Neil Med Sinus Rinse Bottle and Sachets as I find them very easy to use and they're easy to get hold of. The starter kit comes with a bottle and 60 sachets along with an excellent booklet explaining sinus problems and has very clear instructions on how to use their product. To vary the salt levels, add one sachet to a full bottle to make isotonic and two or three sachets for hypertonic. I will now show you how I rinse my sinuses. If you are squeamish, you'll just have to deal with it, you big wet lettuce. Or you can just skip past it. What more do viewers like than a graphic demonstration of how to do something? So I made this sinus bottle up as per the manufacturer's instructions. This one's just isotonic for the purposes of this. But I've worked out a few little tweaks to help people out. Give me one second, glasses off first. So essentially you hold this against one nostril, open your mouth, making sure you breathe through your mouth and that stops the water going down your throat. Worst case scenario is a teeny little bit of salty water gets in your mouth, but that's the worst that's gonna happen. I've got the water to a very comfortable temperature on the back of my hand for me, which is close to body temperature. So around 35 to 40 degrees seems okay for me at least, but choose your own temperature. Manufacturer's instructions always say to use cooled, boiled water or distilled water and microwave, but that's hard to do and it's more expensive. One little thing I've worked out is if you breathe out through your mouth as you start squeezing, it's much more comfortable than the water comes through. So I'll demonstrate this for you now. Ah! Only joking. Okay, let's do it properly now. So I'm going to breathe out as I start squeezing. Blow a little bit of it out in between, then go up the other nostril. And back up the same nostril again. If this is the first time you've done it, don't be alarmed if a load of gold comes out in the sink. That's what it's for. Now for the probiotics. I hope you found that demonstration suitably appetite inducing. The next stage of the treatment plan is the direct introduction of probiotics into the nasal passages. Probiotic is the term used for beneficial bacteria. As with most natural treatments, scientific data is limited and mixed. So I decided to use common sense along with huge amounts of prior research into the microbiome in general. The two methods I tried with positive results were adding the contents of an oral probiotic capsule to the sinus rinse 
It's important to make sure they contain Lactobacillus casei, often listed as L. casei, which can survive in oxygen-rich environments. Putting live kimchi juice up my nose was the other method I tried. Both worked well for me, but the kimchi method has provided better results. Being a nerdy science lover, I had to try both methods and went for adding probiotic capsules to my sinus rinse first, as I already had them in the house and I could be impatient. To make a probiotic sinus rinse, add one sachet to the bottle, making an isotonic rinse, and empty the contents of a probiotic capsule into the bottle before shaking it up. Then rinse your sinuses as shown in my previous graphic demonstration. It took around three weeks of twice daily probiotic sinus rinses to make a significant improvement to my symptoms, changing the mucus from thick and green to thin and clear. But I then found I needed to continue the probiotic sinus rinses at least once a day to maintain the benefits, as my previous symptoms kept creeping back after stopping the probiotic rinses for a couple of weeks. However, other people may get better results than me as we're all different. The other method was using raw kimchi. After finding a helpful blog, by Mara Silgialis on lactobacto.com called Sinusitis Treatment Story about the use of kimchi for sinus problems. The information made complete sense to me and sparked my interest in trying this method for myself. The results were game-changing for my quality of life. After a month of daily kimchi juice administration, I only need to use the isotonic sinus rinse a few times a week to maintain the benefit. On the rare occasion I pick up a viral infection such as a common cold, or my hay fever is bad, I use the kimchi again once a day for a week or two to ensure my sinuses stay healthy. This is how I use kimchi juice, i.e. shoving it up my nose. So, a couple of quick pointers before you shove the kimchi up your nose. Firstly, don't do it just before you're about to rinse your sinuses out. You're going to wash the kimchi out your nose. And also, if you have washed your sinuses out first, wait an hour or two, otherwise the residual saline could run out and wash the kimchi out your nose as well. It's also important to blow your nose first just to make sure your sinuses are clear before you put the kimchi up. You need to use a live kimchi, usually described as raw on the package. This brand is easily available in England, but if you're in a different country, just have a look in the refrigerated section of the supermarkets. It's often near hummus and dips. If you take a clean spoon, a measuring spoon is quite good because you can rest it on the surface whilst getting the kimchi juice onto your finger. Take the pot, get a small amount of the kimchi juice in the spoon, using a clean little finger, dip it in the juice, making sure there's a little drop of kimchi on the end of your finger, and carefully put it up your nose. Give you a little sniff, just make sure some of the bacteria get a bit further up your sinuses, but ultimately they will find their way up there and they will grow. Then just repeat the process again with the second nostril and another clean finger. The only potential problem with using kimchi is the chili it contains. Some people are less tolerant to the effects of capsaicin, the compound in chili that gives us the burning sensation. It's not harmful and any burning sensation only lasts a few minutes, but in some people it can cause temporary nasal blockage, sneezing and a runny nose. My personal view is that managing to cope with the chili also makes you stronger mentally and better able to cope with stressful situations in the future. So, hashtag deal with it. Another quick side note, there are specific probiotic sinus rinse products available, but they're usually very expensive. These tend to use the kimchi-derived probiotic species Lactobacillus saechii. However, I've not tried these and can't comment on their safety or quality. Antihistamines which are available off the shelves at supermarkets and in pharmacies in the UK are potentially beneficial if you have allergic symptoms such as hay fever or animal allergies. If corticosteroids are needed for more severe symptoms, topical application via nasal sprays are safer than taking them by mouth. Caution is needed with decongestant medications as they are mild stimulants and work by constricting blood vessels. Taken orally, they can increase heart rate and blood pressure which is not ideal for people with cardiovascular problems. Taken as a nasal spray is more effective, but courses must not go on longer than seven days. This is because the receptors they work on in our nasal passages get fatigued with repeated use, leading to rebound nasal blockage that is worse than the initial problem. Also, prolonged reduction in blood flow due to nasal decongestants can potentially lead to tissue damage through lack of oxygen and nutrients. I will now put a slide up showing a full treatment plan, so you can pause the video and take a screenshot. It is important to realise that no treatment is perfect, and you may still get some sinus-related symptoms even if you followed my advice, particularly if some of your symptoms are related to allergies. 
It's also important to reiterate the vast majority of infections leading to sinusitis are caused by viruses which do not respond to antibiotics and generally take 5 to 10 days to settle on their own. What you've seen in this video is based on my own learning and research to successfully improve my sinus problems and does draw upon my prior medical knowledge. However, I must stress the information in this video is not formal medical advice. It is practical information that is intended to help you improve your sinus health. If you have problems with your sinuses or any other medical concern, it is important to get personalised advice from your own doctor or health professional. If you are immune suppressed for any reason, you must get specialist advice before considering live bacteria as any form of treatment or healthy living plan. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you stumbled upon it because you're not feeling well, I wish you a speedy recovery. If you feel like giving me a like, I'd be very grateful. Always remember, we are all part of the universe together. Much love.